So let's give it up for Stephanie. Woo! So this may surprise a lot of you, but as a young adult, I was not the kind of kid that people would look at and say, she'll make a great Marine someday. No, uh, I was a little more into the artistic side of things. I exhibited zero leadership skills, and uh, I certainly wasn't tough. And I would have hated to think about somebody's life depending on my actions, because that was not going to go well for anybody. So um, I was kind of surprised when about five months before I was supposed to start university, my father, who had always told me that he was going to be able to handle tuition, his words, um, called me. I was, I was an exchange student, so I was in a foreign country. And he called me long distance, which is very unlike him. He's, he's cheap. So um, that was scary. And he, he said to me, uh, so it turns out that I got a little less financial aid than I thought for paying for your school. And I said, well, how much did you get? And he said, I got nothing. So don't worry, though. I have this brilliant plan. OK. He said, you're going to join Air Force ROTC. And you will be able to get a, a scholarship. They will pay for everything. I just have to find a way to sell whatever I can, your younger brother, whatever, so that you can go to the first year of school before you get that scholarship. And now, it was kind of shocking. Like I said, I never really thought of myself as like, I'd be signing up for the military. And this would mean I'd have to serve four years in the military. But I knew my father was trying really hard. He was brokenhearted that he had failed me in this way. So I said, great plan. I am on board with the Air Force plan. OK. And, and when I got to school, I actually found it was, it was much better than I thought. It was kind of a nice program. I liked everyone in there. I liked being around all the leadership and letting it wash over me. It was great. Um, but they had these physical fitness requirements that you had to be able to do. And the way they approached it was very different. Air Force was different. So the Army required all of their cadets to like come to this mandatory uh, every morning, Monday through Friday, they, they'd be out on the track running and doing other exercises. And, uh, and the Navy was there, and they had, uh, they had a component, and it was the Marines that you really saw. They were out there. <laughs> and it, it apparently was just volunteer. It wasn't like they were supposed to be there, but they were all gung-ho. So they had this really small, it was like a group of eight Marines in the midst. Um, and then the Navy had their own separate separate from the little Marine Corps, had their own thing. But the Air Force's approach was like, you do this on your own. We trust you. You do whatever you need. <laughs> and then we'll just expect you every six months to be able to pass these physical fitness requirements, right? And so that is how I wound up on my own out there trying to like run and do all these things. And so this gunny sergeant who's there with the Marine crew, he came up to me one day and he said, uh, Oh, what's, what are you doing out here by yourself? How come you, because, you know, I'm in the midst of all these groups. And I explain to him about the Air Force's policy, and he shakes his head uh, just at the sheer stupidity of the Air Force. And, um, and he says, well, that, that's no good. That's no good. You don't have your people. You don't have anyone supporting you. He said, from today on, you're going to be an honorary Marine. You're going to work out with us. And I was so excited. All of a sudden, I had, like, these brethren, right? <laughs> and they were awesome. And uh, it turns out that like the best way to learn how to do pull-ups, which I really hadn't been able to do, is to have a handy Marine hoist you up over the bar, and then you let yourself down slowly. So anyhow, I got really good at those. But the best thing about it was when I would be running on the track with all these Army people and the few Marines and some Navy people, um, the gunny sergeant would yell all these motivational things. And it worked really well. So if I passed like an army cadet out there, he'd yell, that's right, she'd be passing you because she a Marine. <laughs> and I felt really good. Um, sometimes I felt bad about it because sometimes he was mean. Like I once saw this army woman get a, like a stitch in her side and she, she kind of slowed down and stopped. And he said, oh, you in pain? Well, that's because you're not a Marine. If you're a Marine, you feel no pain. And... 
And I, it worked on me, even though I wasn't actually a Marine. I still felt like, that's right. I don't feel pain. Um, and, it, and it got to the day where he said, I mean, I was running better than I ever had. Everything, but he, he came to us one day and he said, okay, tomorrow morning we're going to meet at 5 a.m. outside. We're going to run outside. And I had to tell him, I had to come afterwards and say, uh, Gunny Sergeant, I'm really sorry. Um, I have these allergies. I have asthma. And if I run outside in the cold on the hill, it just, uh, you know, it probably wind up having to take me to the hospital. Like, you know, I've been taking him before. Even walking fast can take me down. I just, I can't. And, and he looked at me and he said, Marines feel no pain. And that means Marines also do not have asthma attacks. <laughs> and so I went and I ran and I kept waiting for the asthma to start. It did not. My entire body was convinced I was a Marine by God. And as it turned out, um, Air Force did not work out. They, they actually didn't have any more scholarships to give. They decided they were in financial trouble. So uh, that did not happen. But I will always consider myself an honorary Marine, thanks to Gunny Sergeant.